Two servants for the price of one? Well, as a pair of great villains once said, prepare for trouble and make it double. Hello everyone, Sobero Neo of GNA Reviews here, with a servant spotlight for Kaldia's most tyrannical twins, Dias Goody, aka Castor and Pollux. We'll be examining their stats and skills, as well as going over pointers on how to utilize them effectively, and an overall grade comparing them to how they stack up to the other 5 star servants. So if you're ready to tackle this terrible twosome, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and ring my bell, so that you can catch all of these spotlight videos as they go up and you can help out the channel. And now, onto Dioscurity's stats. Dioscurity has a max HP of 14,824 and a max attack of 11,840. Their HP is very high even for a 5 star Saber Servant, while their attack is about average for their class. Outside of their class, Dioscurity retains one of the highest HP stats among 5 star Servants, while their attack is just a little bit above the average. When it comes to their command cards, Castor and Pollux have 5 hits on their Quick card, 4 hits on their Arts card, 2 hits on their Buster, and 5 hits on their Extra card. They have an NP gain rate of 0.51% and a star rate of 10%. Both Dioscuri's NP gain and star generating are excellent, due in large part to their double quick and art deck, as well as very high hit counts. Dioscuri has an impressive and well-rounded stat spread, being above average in almost every area. Taking a look at their skills, Dioscuri's first skill is Stars of the Chief God Rank A. This skill grants them a unique buff that allows their quick cards to generate between 5-10% to NP gain, and their arch cards to generate 5 to 10 crit stars with every card, both depending on level. Their second skill is Guardians of Navigation rank B, which increases the party's NP damage and attack for one turn, both between 10 and 15%, and both depending on level. This skill also grants debuff immunity to the party for one time or three turns. And finally, their last skill is Mana Burst Light Ancient rank A. It increases their quick and arch card effectiveness for three turns, between 10 and 20%, depending on level, and also grants them evasion for one turn. As for their passives, well, they have a lot. First up, they have Magic Resistance rank A, which increases their debuff resist by 20%, Riding rank B, which increases their quick card effectiveness by 8%, Madness Enhancement rank B-, minus, which increases their buster card effectiveness by 7.5%, Avenger rank B, which increases their NP gain by 18% when taking a hit, Oblivion Correction rank C, which increases their crit damage by 6%, Self Replenishment Magic rank D, which charges their NP gauge by 3% every turn, and Twin Gods Essence rank B, which increases their damage by 225, their NP gain by 5%, and their star generating by 5% as well. As for their deck and Noble Phantasm, Dioscurity has an Arts Quick deck with Quick Quick, Arts Arts Buster, and an Arts Noble Phantasm. Their Noble Phantasm is Dioscurtius Tenardier, which is a single target Arts attack that ignores invincibility for one turn, and deals defense piercing damage to one enemy between 900 and 1500% depending on level, as well as reduces their Arts and Quick Heart effectiveness for three turns between 10 and 30% depending on overcharge. Unfortunately, Ascending the Twins is going to require a good mix of really hard to acquire mats. For level ascension, they're going to need 22 chains, 6 lamps, 9 reactor cores, and 12 divine spheres. Chains can be farmed at the Wastelands of Death in Camelot, where they have a 65% drop rate, lamps have a 20% drop rate at the Jail in Salem, reactor cores drop at the Prison Camp in Lost Belt 3 with a 20% drop rate, and divine spheres are a new mat that will drop in the underground belt mechanism outer region in Olympus with a 39% drop rate. For skill leveling, Dioscurity will need 9 lamps, 44 chains, 11 comet shards, and 24 divine spheres per skill. The comet shards are also a new Olympus mat that will be farmable at the Machine God's Cloister where they have a 12% drop rate. Right off the bat, no analysis of these twins should start off with anything but that laundry list of passives. Castor and Pollux have a buff for just about every stat under the sun. Quick up, buster up, NP gain up, star generating crit damage, and high debuff resistance. This wealth of passive buffs helps to bolster Castor and Pollux's overall stat spread even further. They have both excellent NP gain and star generating to enable constant NP spam and crits, as well as very high HP and even good attack. 
So stat-wise, Dioscuri excels in all areas, defense, offense, and even utility, which is one of the main reasons why they are such an incredibly strong solo unit, but we'll get into that later. First, let's talk a bit about Dioscuri's active skills. Dioscuri has a unique mana burst in Mana Burst Ancient Light. This skill is a split buff, buffing both arts and quick card effectiveness by 20%, and it also provides a one turn of aid. The buff numbers on the skill are unfortunately a little low given the six turn cooldown, but they are buffed a little bit by Dioscuri's passives. The increase to quick and arts card effectiveness not only helps them with damage, but also increases their NP gain and star generating so that they can loop and crit much more easily. And because over 80% of their deck consists of arts and quick cards, Castor and Pollux get a lot of mileage out of the skill. The evade is also a nice bit of added protection, hard defense is always good to have, and it can help them survive most enemy NPs in a pinch. Between this mana burst and their innate stat spread, Castor and Pollux already have very strong NP gain and star generating, but what really pushes them over the edge is their first skill, Stars of the Chief God. This skill gives them a unique buff which makes their arch cards generate 10 crit stars, and their quick cards generate 10% NP charge for 3 turns. This buff is massive, and it isn't limited by any number of hits either. It will always last the full 3 turns. So when being used solo, Dioscuri can get an obscene amount of bonus NP charge and star generating from this skill alone. And this is what makes them such a good soloer, since they can produce a tremendous amount of NP charge and crit stars simultaneously every single turn. Outside of soloing, this skill is a lot less consistent, but still pretty good, because it just makes their already strong arts and quick cards even more ridiculous. But believe it or not, Dioscuri has yet another damage buff in their last skill, Guardians of Navigation. The skill is a party-wide NP and attack buff that also gives the party a one-time debuff immunity. This this skill is a very nice bit of utility that will help Dioscuri outside of just solo comps. The damage buff to the party is quite strong and it is a good way to set up an NP chain, while the debuff immunity is a rare skill that can be invaluable in tougher content, especially in challenge quests where being able to dodge a specific debuff could be the difference between success and defeat. All three of Dioscuri's skills are strong, so skill priority is very flexible, but I would recommend Stars of the Chief God first just because it helps so much with looping, especially when soloing, followed by Mana Burst for even more damage and NP gain, and then the NP buff last because party buffs are not a top priority for the twins. As always, go with Mana Loading first for a pen skills, followed by the extra card damage, but you can ignore the anti-ruler damage since it isn't really worth it. Dioscuri's Noble Phantasm is a single target arts attack that pierces both invincibility and defense, and it applies arts and quick down on an enemy. This is an outstanding noble phantasm for boss fights, since it can hit through anything while also debuffing enemies in a significant way. Remember that arts and quick resistance down doesn't just apply to damage, it also increases NP gain and star generating when you're attacking that specific enemy, so there is snowball potential. And with NP gain as good as Dioscuri's, this noble phantasm is easily loopable even when soloing, so that debuff is stackable. I know I don't usually mention soloing all that much in my spotlights, but here it's kind of necessary. The twins feel like completely different servants on their own, and they are by far and away better when they're used by themselves. Their outstanding base stats combined with the bonuses from Stars of the Chief God give them unmatched consistency and DPS potential when they're soloing. They can basically crit every single hit and loop every turn while this skill is active. That isn't to say that they're bad on standard teams though, in fact they're quite strong in most cases. Their AoE debuff immunity and spammable NP that pierces everything is very strong in just about every boss fight and challenge quest, so they are premier servants for difficult content. They're also highly self-sufficient, so you don't need to rely on elite supports to carry them. The downside to using them on a team though is that the twins are highly card dependent. They need their art and quick chains, so that they can snowball with their first skill. Without a way of consistently getting those specific brave chains, they become a lot less consistent. Castor and Pollux are also unfortunately one of the weaker hitting single target sabers, because they lack an NP interlude or bonus damage of any kind, which are common in saber servants, especially at their rarity. So don't expect them to wow you with big damage in the way that Musashi or even Nero Bride and Benny Enma can. 
As far as team comps go, the best team for Dioscuri is probably Double Arash or Double Habitrot for reasons that I've already mentioned. Let's just say that the twins are big fans of the good old Double Stella. However, if you do want to use Dioscuri in a more standard team comp, specifically for challenge quests, then it's best to pair them with servants who can further accelerate their NP gain, as well as provide them some damage buffs like Tamamo, Santa Altera, or Lan Ling. All three provide good direct NP charge to help Dioscuri with looping, while Lan Ling and Altera provide additional strong damage buffs or crit stars, and Tamamo can help with managing cooldowns and damage as well. I do also want to give a shout out to Summer BB as well, since as you can imagine, being able to freeze cards is exceptionally useful for a servant like Dioscuri. Dioscuri's bond CE is Starlight Sword and Discus, which increases the party's quick and arch card effectiveness by 10%. It's not really worth using though, since Castor and Pollux are selfish servants that would rather rather benefit from direct damage buffs to themselves, so I would recommend using CEs that help bolster their arts and quick cards, like Mary Sheep, Can't Fight on an Empty Stomach, and the soon to release Mission Start. You can also go with more direct buffs to arts cards and NP damage to improve their DPS, like Heaven's Feel, Formal Craft, or Royal Icing. In the future, I do recommend Ocean Flyer, it's a very good free to play craft essence that buffs arts card effectiveness, NP damage, and gives starting NP charge with full attack stats. For command codes, I would recommend Armament of Triumph and Majin Sun, specifically on Dioscuri's arts cards, since you want to ensure that they can crit with their arts cards for better NP gain, and Star Absorb increasing command codes are probably the best way of doing that. Overall, Dioscuri is a strong all-rounder in most arts teams and an elite DPS as a solo servant. Stars of the Chief God is a ridiculously strong skill that enables consistent crits and NP looping in solo fights, while the utility from their invincibility and defense piercing NP also make them very viable for late game boss fights and challenge quests. Their all-around great stats and wide range of skills also means that they aren't as reliant on supports to work effectively as most other DPSs. On the downside though, Dioscuri can be highly inconsistent outside of soloing due to their very heavy reliance on card RNG, and their lack of NP damage makes it hard for them to compete with most other single target sabers. So all in all, both of the twins get a B plus from me. I think they're just one NP interlude away from being top tier SSR servants, since they do need a little bit of help with that NP damage relative to other sabers. But on the whole, they're quite strong in just about any arts team, and they're absolutely bonkers if you want to try soloing with them. And those are my thoughts on Castor and Pollux. I should also mention that Grail Fronts will be coming to NA very soon, and if you're looking for servants who can absolutely tear that game mode apart, then you might want to consider these twins. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over in our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight, so we're running out. Later.